Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another College and Career Pathways, where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m., we provide you with information on various colleges and universities, financial aid resources, uh, technical schools, training programs, skilled trade professions, and career readiness skills, all designed to help you make the best decisions, uh, the best career decisions possible. I'm Tony Curitan, your host, and today we are with Oakland University. Oh, you, yay. Yay. <laughs> Welcome. We are so glad to have you. Thank you. So glad to be here. You can go ahead and get started in your presentation. Okay, perfect. Can, can, you, can you hear me okay? Is it coming through? Yes. No? Okay, perfect. Um, well, as you mentioned, I am with Oakland University. My name is Courtney Howard. Um, I'm an admissions advisor with the university. Um, I have been here for almost two years. Um, I just recently took over this territory, so I now work um, with mostly Oakland County, Macomb County students, um, but with this being a virtual academy, working with students, um, you know, all over the state um, as well for some of our virtual programs. Um, with this presentation, it's, we're going to go through, do an overview of the university. I'm going to try to go through that pretty quickly so that we can save some time for questions, answer any specific, you know, information that you are looking for, um, and then give you an opportunity to scan a QR code to receive further information from us. So that was just a little bit about me um, as your admissions advisor. Let's get this going. So we're just going to start with a quick bit of history. I promise it won't be long. Um, but for anyone that didn't know, Oakland University, we were established in 1957, um, making us the youngest public university in the state of Michigan. At this time, we were known as Michigan State University Oakland. So we were actually a sub-campus, um, satellite campus for Michigan State. That only lasted a few years. Um, it was in 1963. We severed those ties, became our own standalone university, Oakland University. Um, <clears throat> that little mascot that you see up top there, that's Pioneer Pete. Um, Oakland was a Division II school for quite a few years um, until 1998. Um, so only a little, you know, about 27 years or so ago, uh, we transitioned to a Division I school. Um, and that's, you know, what we are now and what we've been since then. Um, Oakland has gone through a lot of changes. So if either of you have been to campus maybe a couple of years ago, um, or if you've never been, there's a there's a lot of updates we're doing here at the, the university. Some of the most recent ones in 2018, we renovated our Oakland Center. Um, so it now includes dining spaces, uh, performance venue, meeting spaces, and that's going to be like our central hub of campus. Um, in 2022, we did some renovations on our East Wilson Hall. So I'm lucky enough to work in the newer, one of the newer academic buildings on campus. We've now moved over the Academic Success Center, which was formerly the OU <clears throat> Tutoring Center. We have Disability Support Services there, as well as the OU Testing Center. And then by the end of 2024, we will finish renovations on two additional buildings. This building you see right here in the picture is South Foundation Hall. That is going to greatly expand our, expand our classroom space. And then if either of you are interested in the performing arts, so music, theater, dance, we're also doing some renovations to Varner Hall for our School of Music, Theater, and Dance as well. And then as we continue to grow, we hope to see you at OU in 2024 or in the very near future if you are not um, you know, a senior at this point. So now we've gone through the quick history of Oakland and our updates. Um, we wanna run through what enrollment looks like at the university. So Oakland's considered a mid-sized institution. We have a little over 16,000 students that attend our school. Um, average class size is about 35 students per class, but the higher you get in your major, that number tends to shriek down. When our students are not in class, they're taking part in one or more of our student organizations. We have over 250 student organizations on campus. They can range anywhere from, uh, you know, Greek life to 
academic interests, religious interests, honestly, whatever you're looking for. And if we don't have a, an organization you're looking for, you can always create one. Um, and then let's say that, you know, you were thinking ahead and you've decided, you know what, I think I want to start at a community college and then transfer to Oakland. We are the number one transfer destination. Two things that, you know, make that possible. We accept a lot of college credit that other universities um, may not. Um, and with our transfer students, we're located in the heart of Metro Detroit. So a lot of students are able to stay at home, commute to campus, um, and be able to finish out their degrees after starting at a community college. So if that's something you're thinking, that's also a really big part of our student population at Oakland as well. Now living on campus, Oakland does not require, we don't require any of our students to live on campus. However, we do have options. We have four residence halls on campus and two on-campus apartment complexes. We have a little uh, around 2,400 students who do, do live on our campus. Um, so majority of our students do commute. However, if, you know, getting away from home, living on a college campus is something that you're looking forward to, you do have that possibility at OU. This building you see right here, this is Hillcrest. That's our newest residence hall, and that is reserved for upperclassmen. So after your first year, you could live there. So for our um, first year students, Hamlin Hall is going to be most popular for our incoming freshmen, unless you are a part of our honors college, then you'd have the opportunity to live in Oakview. And I will, in a couple of slides, I'll go over what the honors college is. Um, with living on campus, we do include laundries included. Uh, for our students, as well as our meal plan. So there's no additional cost for your meal plans at OU. As I mentioned, we are a Division I school. We have 18 D1 men's and women's sports, as well as a co-ed esports team at Oakland as well. So even if you're not interested, you know, in playing at the D1 level, um, you can get into all of our D1 sports for free with your Grizzly ID. But we also have club sports. That's going to be a level below D1 where you it's still competitive. You play against other schools. It's just not as big of a time commitment as D1. And then intramural sports. If you want to play for fun, you get together with a group of Oakland students and play with, uh, against other Oakland students. Our first year advising center. So for this is really for our first year students helping you make that transition from high school to college, but also our transfer students. If you're undecided, coming into Oakland as a transfer, or you're redeciding your major, that's literally what this department's here for. So they're just focused to working with our first year students to help you make that transition and figure out what's gonna be the best path for you. So don't be worried at all if you don't know, you know exactly what you wanna do coming into OU. And I mentioned that Honors College. So that building that you see the students standing in front of is our is Oakview Hall, one of our um, other newer residence halls. For our Honors College students, if you have a 3.7 or higher cumulative GPA leaving college or high school, I'm sorry, you're automatically invited to be a part of our Honors College. It's gonna offer um, a smaller classroom feel within the big university feel for our high achieving students. Um, when you graduate from the program, you would graduate with honors and that would be notated on your transcript and your diploma. So just something to help you stand apart when you are going to apply for jobs and you know making those moves after you finish your undergraduate degree. So if you are a student who's in that 3.7 or higher range, um, the Honors College does do info sessions. So you could always go to one of those info sessions and see if this would be a good fit for you. Um, if you go to oakland.edu slash honors college, that's where you can find all that information. And studying abroad. So um, <clears throat> we are, we do have students study abroad in over 50 countries, um, six continents. Um, we offer scholarships specifically for our students studying abroad. And we have a variety of different opportunities ranging from one week programs to three weeks over like a Christmas break to a, um, you know, a month, to a whole semester. So there's a lot of different options if studying abroad is something that you're considering. Um, this information, if you wanna look at the different programs that Oakland offers, you can visit oakland.edu for, forward slash IE to see all the different countries and programs that we offer. Um, but this is a really good opportunity. There's only so many times in your life you'd be able to just pack up and go across the country for you know maybe a whole month or a couple months. So if you are someone, you know, who really likes to travel, but also, you know, wants to learn about another culture, 
um, really consider, you know, potentially studying abroad and making an appointment with an advisor, see if it's a good fit for you. So question, any questions so far? Should I make sure I'm not going too fast, giving too much information? We okay. good? Okay. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, so now we kind of talk about some of the things that Oakland offers. Want to get into the programs um, that Oakland offers at the university. So we have over 140 programs. They're all going to be broken up between the different professional schools and colleges. There are, two of them are cut off. I apologize. I don't know why it's like that. But the School of Business has a handful of majors and then School of Nursing. All the rest of them you should be able to see here. Um, again, if you're coming in undecided, that is totally okay. We have um, undecided health sciences, oops, sorry, undecided health sciences, undecided engineering, um, or, you know, being completely undecided. You'll work at that first year advising center to help you out. So let's say, you know, after today and kind of looking into Oakland, you're like, you know what, Oakland seems like a good institution. I want to apply and see. Our application is free. It's free year round, not just in the month of October. And you can fill that application out right on our website, oakland.edu slash apply. We are on the Common App this fall, so you can apply on the Common App if you would like as well. So as far as what you need to apply, I'm just really going to run through the freshman side. If you're someone that's considering transferring, though, you'll see the transfer um, transfer criteria here as well. So for freshmen, we look for that free online application, and then we'll have you submit your high school transcript. We are test optional, so you do not have to submit ACT or SAT scores, but if you do, that could help you with a higher merit scholarship, which we'll go into. But really, those two things, um, we have a the essay is optional, so we do not require students to submit an essay. There is not a prompt. So if you decide to write an essay, it's really just based off of you wanting to share your experiences. And then what our uh, criteria, what our average student comes in with. So at Oakland, we for both freshmen and transfers, we look for a minimum 2.5 GPA. We will consider starting there. But our average freshman class from last year came in with about a 3.5. And then for students who did submit SAT scores, a 1060. We accept a lot of college credit. So if you, you know, do dual enrollment, if you have any AP, IB, CLEP, DSST scores, um, we accept a lot of credit. So really make sure you send those scores in. If you go to oakland.edu slash college credit, that will let you know the exact score that's needed on any of these exams to receive that credit. All right, now the, the financial part of college. College is, it, um, it's an investment. It is a hefty investment. And so I like to talk about some of the different ways to get that cost of what you're paying down. I think Oakland does a really good job um, about offering different financial assistance to students. So I wanna go through that, but let's just start with that foundation. Tuition at Oakland is gonna be a little over 14,000 and that's for an, a year of tuition as a full-time student. And then the housing cost is optional, but if you decide to live on campus, that's what you'd be adding on for about 25K. I mentioned that's a large number. The first thing I wanna mention with that number is that Oakland is a fee-free institution. We are the only public university in the state of Michigan that does not um, add additional mandatory fees for our students. So what that means is your tuition and your housing costs is gonna encompass everything. The only thing is books um, are still not included. Um, so for some examples, students can have a car on campus starting their first year, and we do not charge students to park on campus. Um, using our rec center is free. Our tutoring services are free for our students. Um, attending any of our sporting events are free, laundry, so on and so forth. Just something to keep, just keep in the back of your mind when you're looking at different institutions is you'll want to see what those additional fees are going to be that's going to add on to, you know, tuition and housing you're paying. So that's one thing to mention about Oakland. The other thing is that more than 50% of our students, um, actually those numbers are more around 70%, um, receive some sort of financial aid, whether that be scholarships, grants, loans, um, work study, so a variety of different options. The first one I wanna talk about is gonna be our merit scholarships. These are gonna be based directly off of your um, academics and these are automatic, meaning you do not have to apply for these. 
as long as you apply to Oakland before our priority deadline of March 1st, you'll automatically receive one of these scholarships. So this is where those test scores come into play I mentioned earlier. You do not have to submit them for admission, but if you did really well on your ACT or SAT, you could submit those scores to receive a higher merit scholarship. I'm trying to move this. Um, Perfect. So if you do not submit a test score, the highest you can re receive is our Talented Scholar Award of $3,500 a year for four years. If you have a 3.9, but, you know, let's say you did really well on your ACT, got a 33, you can get our highest award of Platinum Presidential. Um, with these awards, we do take your highest GPA and highest test score. So let's say you apply to Oakland and you have a 3.4 when you apply, but you finish up your senior year at a 3.5, we'll always bump up your scholarship to the next tier, but we'll never bump your scholarship down if your GPA goes down for whatever reason. And then those scholarships are just our automatic scholarships. We have around 350 additional ones that students can apply for. That opens December 1st and closes March 1st. So you can apply for a variety of different scholarships and add on top of your merits. The other form talked about the academic base and now the need based form of financial aid. So FAFSA, FAFSA, again, that's a free application for federal student aid. FAFSA is making some changes this year. They're going to be positive changes. Um, they're telling us more students are going to be eligible for financial aid that typically wouldn't have been eligible, eligible for it in the past. So that's a big plus. Um, again, it is set to open in December. FAFSA has not released the official date. So we do not know that yet, but as soon as we find out, we will um, communicate that information. So when it opens, you'll wanna go to fafsa.gov and fill out that application with you and your parent or guardian. Um, FAFSA is gonna let you know if you're eligible for any Pell Grants or federal grants. It'll let you know if you're eligible for any scholarships. Um, or I'm sorry, it'll let you know if you're eligible for the Merit, uh, the Michigan Achievement Scholarships that were new last year. That's fifty five hundred. You could receive up to fifty five hundred dollars a year for five years through the Michigan Achievement Scholarships, and then in addition to that, we have our Golden Guarantee. This is new this year. Um, for students who have, you have to first complete the FAFSA, and then if you have family income of equal to or less than seventy thousand and assets of less than fifty thousand, you can have up to a hundred percent of your tuition covered at Oakland whatever is not already covered by other gift aid. So essentially what we do is we take that tuition, that 14,000, we subtract any scholarships you've received, any federal, any state grant. And then once we once we take the scholarships and grants you've already received, whatever your remaining balance is, Oakland will just cover that for you. So this could be a really great opportunity to go to school debt-free um, and not have to worry about you, the tuition and the payment part of it. So again, if you fall into that range with income and assets, um, you can have all your tuition covered. That one's just gonna be for uh, tuition. And then we also have a housing grant. So if you do wanna live on campus, you can uh, receive an award of about $5,000 a year for four years. Similar um, or the same income we're looking for in assets. But the only difference is the housing grant does require you to have at least a 3.0 GPA leaving high school. The Golden Guarantee does not have a GPA requirement. So that's really the only difference between the two. And then we do have some transfer scholarships. Won't go into these too much in depth, but if you are someone that's considering transferring, um, these are gonna be broken down depending <clears throat> how, many, how, much, how many credits you have at the time that you're transferring. Um, and then the four years, man, that's if you're coming from another university versus a community college. And these are, you're eligible for these for two years rather than four for the freshman awards. Okay, no, I've ran through a lot of information. Just want to take a quick break and see, are there any questions that we have on FAFSA, financial aid? I know FAFSA can be a complicated process. Um, any questions on researching scholarship, really anything on scholarships and grants? Courtney, I have a question regarding Absolutely. Uh, the Golden Guarantee. Mm -hmm. so, students that have 
family asset and income level of less than $70,000 can receive that scholarship, which would allow them to um, not have to pay tuition after you know, FAFSA and any scholarships that they've earned. If there's a balance, the golden guarantee will cover that, correct? That is correct, yes. And, and the GPA admission is 2.5. Do you yes. have to have, is it okay to have that 2.5 or do you need that three point for that golden guarantee scholarship? Great question. So yeah, for the golden guarantee, 2.5 is the minimum. Yep, so if you're admitted to the university, you'd be eligible for that. The only grant that needs the 3.0 is the housing grant. Okay. So if you yep, decide to live on campus and you're awarded that grant, you would have to have a 3.0 from high school. Okay, good deal. Mm -hmm. You guys got any other questions? All right, then you can go ahead and continue. Okay, perfect. All right, we just have a, we just have a couple more um, slides that I wanted to run through. Um, the resources and services. So these are going to be, you know, some of uh, my favorite things that Oakland offers. There's a quite a few here. These are all going to be free for our students to utilize. But the couple that I want to just highlight and uh, point out is Office of Global Engagement. So if you are someone that's interested in studying abroad, that would be the office that you you know would want to talk to. The Academic Success Center. Um, for the Academic Success Center, we do peer tutoring. Um, so another Oakland student who received a B plus or higher in a specific class could then tutor another student in that class. Um, so we do that. We also do for some of our higher level classes, we will um, not do peer tutoring, but we'll have you know a professional like grad assistant um, teach that teach the tutoring for that session as well. Um, the Graham Health and Counseling Center. So at Oakland, we offer our students um, four free mental health um, therapy sessions, and then your next 11 sessions are only $20. So there is a copay, but it's a small copay, and that's without any, you know, any insurance. Um, so that is another thing that I would just recommend. I know with everything going on over the past couple of years, mental health services have definitely been on the rise. So I wanted to make sure that I pointed that out. Um, and then we have some other, some other services. So Center for Multicultural Initiatives is really there to help, um, our students of color and, um, from different, you know, cultural backgrounds, um, Gender and Sexuality Center, really there to support our LGBTQ plus students, veteran support services, um, and then career services. This is probably my favorite. Um, they're really, really great about helping students with interview prep, um, helping students like find internships, helping our students with their resumes and cover letters. They do a ton of different workshops throughout the year. So making sure that when you graduate from Oakland, you're prepared to go out there in the real world um, and be set up for success. Um, last couple things on Oakland. So we are we're one of the few public universities in the state of Michigan um, that has all of our classes taught by professors. So every single class at Oakland is taught by a professor that has their doctorate. There are some other schools, a lot of times it's your larger schools that have grad assistants or teaching assistants teach classes, but Oakland does not have that. Um, our grad assistants might do tutoring services, but they do not teach any of our classes. So that's something else to kind of, you know, keep in mind, you're having experts in the field teaching your classes um, and all are required to have at least their doctorate. So as far as next steps, let's say, you know, let's say you've already been admitted. I don't know where we're at yet, but if you're a senior and you've been admitted to Oakland, first thing you'll want to do is activate your account. That's the most important. It does not lock you into Oakland, but it allows you to go through the next steps and see what your scholarship award is, see if you're invited to the Honors College. So you want to activate your account. If you decide that Oakland's a school you want to attend, starting in May of 2024, for our seniors, we start our orientations. That's where you'll register for classes. You'll meet with one of those advisors from the first year advising center we talked about. And then you will have an assigned advisor for your first year. So 
you don't have to worry about, you know, who am I going to be speaking to this time when I go in, you'll have the same advisor that entire year. Um, and then if you decide to live on campus, if you decide that's, you know, a good fit for you, you would then go ahead and apply for housing at that time as well. Now, we do have some really great upcoming events. I'll leave these up here for a second. Um, if anyone is interested in pre-med, nursing, education, or health sciences, we have academic visit days for those programs. Um, the welcome reception, that's gonna be more so reserved for students once you're already admitted. And then winter walk, it's basically a daily campus tour, but it's on a Saturday because our campus tours are usually just Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. And so if you attend nursing, education, or health science day, those are all on Saturdays. Pre-med night is a Wednesday, but it is at, at um, later in the evening after classes. You can visit all these events at oakland.edu slash visit to sign up. They're all free for students. And so if you are thinking any of those programs, I highly, highly, highly can't recommend enough to attend one of those. And then if you're interested in engineering your business, we do have visit days for those, but they're not until January and February of next year. So they're just not on these slides yet, but you can still sign up for them at that link. And last couple things, follow us on social media. Um, it's a really great way to stay up to date with any um, events that we have. So a lot of those events you saw on the last slide, we'll post updates and reminders on our social media channels. Um, we do giveaways, talk about different important dates. We'll also probably post about when FAFSA is gonna be open. So that's a really great way to stay up to date with us. We have the same handle, it's at OU Admissions on um, all the four different channels, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter. And then with that, the last thing I have is um, I have a QR code here. If you wouldn't mind, I'm just gonna move this out the way. If you wouldn't mind scanning that QR code, um, it just lets me know who is here, who attended. Also lets helps us keep track of numbers, letting our supervisor know how many students we talk to. Um, so if you just wanna pull out your phone, scan that, fill out your, the information, what major you're interested in, then we can also send you some info based off of you know your programs. Okay, so that is, that's everything I have for you and the overview I wanted to go um, go over with Oakland. Do either of you have any questions about anything maybe I didn't cover that you wanted to hear about, anything at all? Um, Courtney, I do have a question. Yes, With maybe. regards to uh, the Golden Guarantee, is that mm -hmm. just for recently graduated from high school or can it be for... Um, transfer students or people who decided, you know, several years after high school, I think I want to go to college? Mm -hmm. Great question. So that award is for any student who has um, graduated high school, but has not attended college or any post-secondary education. So transfers are not eligible for that okay. award. Okay. But if a freshman graduated five years ago, but never went to college, they would still be eligible. Okay, good deal. Good deal. Mm -hmm. You yeah. guys, um, any questions for Courtney? You can either unmute or type in the chat. I'll be able to read it. Unless I just did such a great job. There's no questions. I covered everything. <laughs> No questions, you guys. All right, then we will wrap this up and bring this to a close. Courtney, thank you so much. Uh, great presentation. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you. for joining. And um, everybody have a great day. We'll see you all next time. Thank you for your time. All right, bye. Bye-bye.